one of the questions we often get asked is about the appropriate diagnostic and staging workup for patients who present with primary melanoma. For patients who present with a primary melanoma that is at least one millimeter thick without clinical uh, evidence of lymph node involvement, we generally recommend that patients undergo a sentinel lymph node biopsy to determine if, if there is microscopic lymph node involvement. We also consider sentinel lymph node biopsy for patients with thinner primary melanomas, but with high risk features, such as the evidence of tumor ulceration. For patients who undergo a sentinel lymph node biopsy that does confirm metastatic involvement of the lymph nodes, we often recommend completion lymph node dissection, as it can actually be very informative in terms of the patient's subsequent risk to know if other lymph nodes are involved. Notably, it's unclear at this point if the completion lymph node dissection actually has therapeutic benefit from patients, and hopefully we'll have data in the near future in those regards. For patients who have lymph node involvement, it is routine for us to evaluate whether the patient has evidence of distant metastatic disease with imaging of the body, either by CAT scans of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, or potentially by PET-CT, particularly for patients who aren't amenable to IV contrast studies. In addition, melanoma is a disease that has high risk of metastasis to the brain, and therefore we usually include an initial baseline MRI of the brain in the evaluation of any new patient with regional involvement. For patients who present with metastatic or stage four melanoma, it's very important to perform certain baseline evaluations to help guide appropriate patient management. Those include initial radiographic studies to determine the extent of the disease, including MRI of the brain, and also imaging of the body, either by CAT scans or by PET-CTs. In addition, it is the standard of care for patients to undergo molecular testing of their tumors for the BRAF V600 mutation. This mutation is detected in approximately 50% of cutaneous melanomas, and notably, the BRAF mutations are essentially 100% concordant between primary tumors and metastases, and so that molecular testing can be performed on either primary tumors or biopsies of metastatic lesions. While it is not necessarily standard of care at many centers, we also do extended molecular testing for other known oncogenic mutations in this disease, including NRAS mutations, which are present in approximately 20% of patients, and also mutations in the C-KIT oncogene. Mutations in C-KIT are actually rare in patients with cutaneous melanoma, having a prevalence of about 1 to 2 percent, but they're much more common in other melanoma subtypes, including acral, mucos acral lentiginous melanomas and mucosal melanomas. And notably, patients who have an activating C-KIT mutation may respond to C-KIT inhibitors. One of the emerging areas of research is the immunohistochemistry test for the PDL1 protein. In certain cancers like lung cancer, testing for PDL1 is actually required in order for patients to be treated with PD1 antibodies. That is actually not a requirement in patients with metastatic melanoma. However, there is growing evidence that the PDL1 test may help in making therapeutic decisions for patients.